Welcome back, everybody. My name is Kareen Mills, and this is the Being Mother Hustler podcast, and I'm your host. We are so excited today because we have somebody all the way over in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. Yuan, how do you say your name again? Yuana. Yuana. Yuana, like Joanna with a Y. Yuana name. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Welcome, and I am so excited to hear your story because you said when you reach out to me on social media that you have an amazing story and I love amazing. Like I truly, I think I truly live to hear these stories and mm -hmm. I just love hearing them because every story is different, right? And every story is really truly what makes a human being who they are. So, yeah. so uh, my story, so just warn me here because you know, I'm a talker. So if I start talking, <laughs> I'll just tell you, stop right there. I have a question. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to try to compress my story as much as I can. Um, Yuana, how about we start with your childhood and tell us oh, wow. about how you were, how you were raised, and talk about your parents and how that impacts you as a child. Talk about how some of the parenting yeah. that maybe maybe you were exposed to you're now maybe applying or not applying as a as a mom now that you are so let's start there take us through that until you know you becoming a, a young adult so i grew up in communist romania i was born in 1980 in uh, in a city that is very close to hungary literally like five minutes drive from the border with hungary mm. um very young parents. My mom was 21. My dad was 24. My dad was attending university. He, um, he has two degrees. He politics and law. My mom, the teacher. And so I grew up pretty much spoiled rotten, you know, just mm -hmm. kind of having it all in communism mm -hmm. because my dad was, um, in the police. My grandfather was also in the army and he was, a colonel and um so i had pretty much everything that i wanted obviously with limits because in communism in romania you know i i didn't just go and get chocolate like we would have to go in the weekend some weekends we were able to get bread and milk other me weekends we were able to get some other stuff like meats and stuff so it was a very regulated system but i didn't really know better right because yeah. i had what i wanted to have and um, so I grew up pretty, pretty well off without any concerns for tomorrow. Um, happy childhood, uh, loving family, loving parents, um, always very artsy and like singing and dancing and just kind of standing out from the crowd. Wanted to be an actress. I have a tape since I was six year old in school. And I said, they asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be an actress. So wow. that's my first record of wanting to be an actress when I was six. Um, then I had a sister. So when I was almost nine, so pretty late, she came, she came to my life. She's wonderful. She's a, she's a doctor. She's a vet. She lives with her husband, who's also a vet in close to England. I mean, close to London in England. Um, when she came into my life, things changed a little bit. I was extremely in love with her. And up to this moment, very, very, um, caring for her. I still call her my little sister and my little daughter. I'm sorry. Um, um, and pretty much we grew up, we grew up together, but separate because of age difference. Mm -hmm. You know, then we start going into middle school and then high school. And then I went to university. And so we didn't really have a strong bond, mm -hmm. like, a, you know, do it all together sort of sisters, but, um, you know, pretty much, um, same with her nice childhood. Um, she's very pragmatic, um, very down to earth. And I was always the kind of crazy one and <laughs> not really following the rules. Um, you know, I mean, not that I wasn't following rules. I was just not very um, typical. Like, yes. You didn't not, like listening and being told what to do. Not really. No, <laughs> not really. Um, so um, grew up, went to... Um, got into university. I think I'm just going to skip what happened in the meantime because nothing really deep happened or nothing really um, mm -hmm. interesting to actually change the course of my life. 
the the real change for me came when I um, when I got into this top university in Romania. It was just like um, six places nationwide for girls to enter. Um, so I pre- I prepared for for years to get into that university. It was like like every weekend I would travel to another city to prepare with one of the biggest actresses in the country. Wow. And, wow. You know, you prepare monologues and uh, like poems and you recite and there's so like, it's like a whole week worth of uh, exams that you have to take to get into that place. And so I got in um, and that's when my life really started happening in a different direction because I wasn't with mom and dad anymore. You know, I was just away from them and Mm -hmm. um, very passionate about my craft. And uh, in Romania, it's different. Like I've, I've learned my lessons when I came to us and came and we landed in LA that being an actor is like a completely different story in Europe, being an actor and working for theater company or doing project is a, not very well paid job necessarily, unless you do like really, really well there as well, right? And you're at the level of like an Oscar winning, Mm -hmm. but obviously you, you, not everybody gets to do this job there. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a certain gift to be considered for that. It's Mm -hmm. it's taken more seriously, right? Um, Even at the bare minimum level of, okay, you know, I wanted to, just some like freelance work. It's really taken seriously. And there's so many amazing actors. There's just so much talent mm-hmm. and raw, you know, not nothing fake, nothing just pure from the heart. It's absolutely mm-hmm. amazing. So there's there's a bunch of great um, actors that are more, more, I mean, they're well known through the world, but people don't really know they're Romanian. Mm -hmm. Uh, They either changed their names just like I did when I went to Hollywood because my manager asked me to. Or, you know, you you don't really know where they're from unless they're big, like, big shots here in Austin. But um, great people and uh, major, major talents came from Romania. And so, finished four years of university. Um, I had a boyfriend for almost the whole four years. that was a colleague of mine. Um, it's like my first real relationship um, with that guy. Um, long story short, <laughs> after we finished university, um, we kind of grew apart in the last year. It was a lot of tension, a lot of work that we had to do. Um, I wanted to go to the US, which I I was coming to the U.S. through my university years every summer as a camp mm-hmm. counselor to make money. And then after I finished university, I said, you know, I, I think I want to do, I, I want to do something to make more money. Um, and I knew that I wanted to come here. I just didn't know how, because obviously to get the visa, right, to come to the U.S. is not just you go, mm-hmm. you know, you just buy a plane ticket and you just go to the U.S. So I applied for this um, for this program to become an au pair, and I said, "Yeah, sure, why not? Um, I'm just going to be an au pair for a year and see if I can do some masters or something. I'll figure it out." Because I was I was always an entrepreneur at heart, just kind of like just go with the flow. Figure it out, yeah. Same yeah, here. I'll just, I'll just yeah. figure it out. I don't care. I'm just yep. going to do it. Whatever happens, happens really not even knowing where I was going, who I was going to go with, how I was going to get from A to Z. I didn't care. (laughs) The one thing special that happened before I came here, because I had arranged everything to come, um, I went, my dad came home and he said, Joanna, I was throwing this huge party for my friends uh, back home and said, you need to come with me to get the beer for the party. And I said, I'm getting ready. I, you know, I want makeup on. I, I have like a couple of hours left. Why do you want me to go get beer? No, no, no. Come get beer. I need you to help me. Blah, blah, blah. So he kind of made up this thump, something for me to go with him. That's your dad. That's my dad. Mm-hmm. Like, which he never does that. So it was such an awkward thing that he was so adamant about that, that I was like, okay, I'm just going to come with you. I still don't understand why to get beer, but I'm going to come. 
So what happened is that he took me to be a factory um, that was owned by our previous neighbors, um, where we used to live when I grew up. In the meantime, we had moved, we had built another house, but it was owned by my previous neighbors. And what happened is that my neighbors told my dad that they didn't really remember me very well as a child. So my dad felt very awkward or whatever, just kind of hurting his ego that my neighbors didn't remember me. And those neighbors turned out to be my father-in-law and my current husband. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. So my father was intrigued by the fact that my current husband, who is almost 10 years older than me, well, he remembered kind of, he kind of remembered me as a child, but he didn't really, he you know, was 10 years, you know, I was six, he was 16 almost. So then he went to college, we never, we maybe said hello to each other twice, like in six years when we were neighbors, right? We didn't really communicate. But my dad said, you don't remember Joanna, you don't remember my daughter. Well, I'll bring Joanna. <laughs> so he actually brought me um, to the beer factory. So they, they used to own a beer factory, one of the best actually beer factories ever. Um, and that's where Mihai, my husband, was helping his dad get ready for this huge festival in the city, um, like a city festival, where they were showcasing their beers and their foods, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. The restaurant, one of them um, was named Jaeger, like one of the great Jaeger beers from Germany. Wow. And so I went, we said hi, and me hi, my husband said hi, and then I tried some beers, and then we kind of laughed and said, oh, you want to come to my party? And he said, well, I'm not sure because tomorrow is the festival, but you know, we'll keep in touch. So we kind of left it at that. Like we didn't really, you know, just kind of, okay, well, okay, I got the beer. And then I went home, I put my makeup on, I went, I had my big party. And the next day he called me um, and said, hey, I'm sorry I missed your party, but do you want to go to maybe you know, drink some wine or um, do you want to go swim? And I go, swim? <laughs> yeah, do you want to go you know, at this lake, Mujden, that they had the lake house? And I said, sure, again, like, why not? <laughs> right, I'm going screaming, sure, I'm going swimming. Uh, with this guy, completely, like, I had so much to do. I had so much backing to do. I just was, like, that tired from the party. But he called. He was just so charming and just so, like, hey, you know, you want to win? I'm like, sure. So that was the moment in my life where I felt like I wanted freedom. Because from the four-year relationship, with my previous boyfriend, who, by the way, shares the same name with my husband. They're both. Wow. <laughs> um, it was like, for the four years, there was this intense relationship. And at the end, because it was so intense and just so overwhelming throughout the four years, at the end, it kind of just felt suffocating. And mm -hmm. so that's when we kind of started going up and down and up and down. We started having arguments. And then... Before I came to the U.S. and I had the party, he was still in my in the other city where my my university was. Mm -hmm. um, so we were kind of together, but kind of not really talking that much anymore. So this was the moment in my life when I felt like oh, I'm already feeling freedom of just not having a boyfriend, and maybe maybe it's time for me to have a one night stand. <laughs> I never had one in my whole life. So let's, let's just have one. Live it. <laughs> Live it. <laughs> so I said, sure. I'm definitely going for the mine. I'm definitely going to swim. I'm in. <laughs> so um, it never, it never just, it was never left at the one night stand because it turned into a whole like life <laughs> together. That's awesome. Yeah, that's how we kind of got together. So you, do you guys move together from there to L.A.? So almost because I remember I was coming here for a year. So I had already planned to come and I did come. I came to, to New Jersey to Allendale, which is like 20 minutes train from Manhattan. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. your uh, 
uh, oven notification. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and um, so I came here and we were communicating um, via email and because it was mostly email. Like long distance relationship. <laughs> like long distance relationship that didn't even, that never had the opportunity to be a relationship because wow. it had the one time thing where I was like, and then I came and I was like, yeah. bye-bye. But <laughs> it, was, it was strong. It was intense. And yeah. um, my husband actually proposed. Wow. Something. Yeah. After a few months of just being like chatting online, he actually proposed. And I said, yes. It was just crazy. Like <laughs> all throughout, through the moon crazy and just not... Nobody even knew about him. All my girlfriends were like, who's that guy? What, what are they doing? <laughs> uh, my parents were in awe, my sister, everybody, uh, because he proposed. And when he proposed, I actually went home for Easter from the US. I, I went home um, and we, we put this ring in a glass of wine. I almost choked on it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <That didn't happen. laughs> and, um, and we were engaged. Everybody found out we were engaged. And something strange happened after that. My husband got a little bit sick and nobody actually knew what was going on with him. Mm. Um, and then when I went home for, after the final year, um, it was a, a, an amazing year for me. I made so many friendships. I actually was staying with, um, I'm not sure if you ever read Revolver, or Rock Magazine, or like the Rolling Stones. Mm -hmm. Rat Talinsky, the editor-in-chief of those magazines in New York, he's, he was the father, right? He was the host with his family, and, and I took care of their two kids. And um, he, it was an amazing year for me. I made amazing friendships. And so while I was you know, communicating with my now, you know, uh, soon-to-be husband and all, um, he... At some point, it was like I wouldn't hear from him anymore. Like once in a week or so, I was like, something's not right. So what happened is that when I went back home, we figured out that he was helping one of his uh, university professors build a chicken coop. Mm -hmm. Chicken coop, right? Yeah. So he nailed a nail in his, in his hand and he got some virus mm. and he wasn't feeling good at all so he was having very strong headaches and he wasn't wow. well and uh, when i went back home he actually sh very shortly after we were watching tv and he had a huge meningitis um attack wow. so he had yeah and he was in the hospital for two months wow yeah it was like, okay, I just got home. It's supposed to be fun. And then um, he almost died. So mm -hmm. we were in and out of the hospital for two months straight, um, not knowing if he's going to live or die. Wow. Um, yeah, I was driving from Romania. He was, um, my father had arranged for him to be taken by the ambulance in Hungary because he studied in Hungary. Mm -hmm. um, he's Hungarian from Romania. He mm -hmm. started there, so my dad had arranged for the ambulance with, like, great... You had to know someone to get the ambulance from a country to another. Mm -hmm. So he had gotten in the hospital. So we were traveling with his parents, going to visit him every couple of days from Romania to Hungary. And we would never know if he's alive or not, because they would not tell us. Wow. So he survived, though. Um, and after that, we just we got engaged got married, um, like shortly after the next year, pretty much. We built a house mm -hmm. um, and he was showing his uncle, this his uncle was, uh, he's still a physician. And there's a lot of doctors that are coming from Romania to the US or they're going to Canada because they're not well paid. So his uncle said, you know, I kinda, I'm kind of sick of the system. I really want to leave and go to the US. So my husband was showing him how to apply for the citizenship, or for 
for becoming, yeah, for coming to the U.S. for the green card lottery, pretty much, mm -hmm. which the Romanian government gives out to several countries. You wow. have to have a very, you know, like you have to have university degree. You have to have a certain amount of money in your account to qualify and stuff like that. And so my, his uncle didn't know he was in Becky. He didn't know how to adjust the picture online, stuff like that to apply. And my husband showed him and uh, he was using my information. <laughs> so he's like, okay, this is how you do it. And then he, for some reason he put my information and when we came from our honeymoon, we went to Africa and we came home from our honeymoon and his dad picked us up and he said, you have this huge package on your table. I, I just left it there. I wanted to throw it away because I couldn't really figure out what it is. It's some sort of junk, but it, yeah, I just left it there. It took us quite a while to figure out what it was. And, <laughs> you know, it was like, Green card, lottery, American embassy, Romanian embassy, blah, 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 what you need to do, stuff like that. So it, it obviously dawned on us that I had won the green card lottery. That's awesome. And absolutely crazy. Like, and obviously, it, as it is in my nature and in my husband's nature too, we don't really think twice about stuff. We just decide yeah. to do it and just do it, right? And yeah. So obviously we came, we left the freshly, we had started the business in ISO in management of quality there. I was in acting. I had started working in theater company and I was very happy with everything. We had built this beautiful house, like a traditional, like transitional high ceiling, beautiful house by us. Like we made it, we chose everything. We left everything just like that. Wow. Within That's crazy, yeah, yeah, my parents, his parents, everybody was kind of shocked. And then we got to the to the U.S. We actually got um, in L.A. because his dad's friend used to own a trucking company, and he said, "Oh well, I'll take your son to help me out." You know, some some something like, "Well, I'll use you," mm -hmm. right? So, do you know English? Sure. What do you know? Well, my husband is an engineer, he has two degrees. Well, I mean, I know anything, I can learn anything. So, yeah. so he said, sure, work for me as a um, dispatcher, as a logistics manager. I had trucks with cars and boats and bikes and stuff. So he would be, my husband was loading his trucks from home, right? With cars and bikes and boats, national and mm -hmm. international, some. Wow. So he, yeah, he grew his profit majestically, like 200% or something like that. Wow. Like and how long, how long ago have you gotten here? When did you come to America? Oh, so we came in 2005. Okay. And did you speak any English at all before you came? Yeah, yeah. I was fluent in English and German. That's um, awesome. Yeah, both of us were actually fluent. Um, my husband didn't know quite as English quite as well as I did, but um, yeah. So we were at a very. I I don't think I um, expanded my language um, that much. Um, yeah. My vocabulary since I came. I think it's just more you know business stuff that I do and yeah. previous. And, and how did you end up in real estate? And and how did you end up in, in North Carolina? Hmm. So um, I started working as an actress and also helping my husband with his company back in LA. And then we had our first girl, our baby girl in 2008. Mm -hmm. um, I did find out when I delivered her that I had very low platelets. So mm -hmm. it was a very harsh delivery. Um, just yeah long um her cord was wrapped around her neck my platelets wow. were dropping 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 and because when you have platelets you're not allowed to take the epidural or you're not allowed to do anything um they didn't give me anything and i didn't dilate so wow. i 
spend the whole night walking or whatever with like um, contractions. And then in the morning, another doctor came and she said, oh my God, you're like barely two to three centimeters dilated. So we need to induce you. So then they induced me. And I'm not sure if you've ever felt that pain where you're induced, you don't have any drugs, mm-hmm. nothing. You're not allowed to get happy girl, nothing. So that's the first time I've encountered um, the, the really, really crazy pain. Um, well, everybody thought we were going to die, both me and her. Um, I am not kidding you. After I actually pushed her out at 4 p.m. the next day, I had this big chunk of hair here because I was doing this on the pillow because of the pain. Yeah. And they had to cut all of my hair off. This is, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't untangle my hair. Uh-huh. Um, so um, my daughter was born. And then um, when she was three years old, we decided to have another baby. But mm-hmm. I lost that baby. I mm-hmm. lost the baby at three months at home in the toilet. Mm-hmm. Um, it was hard. Mm-hmm. It was just more shocking, right? Because you just go and you pee, you want to pee, and then suddenly you start bleeding and you go, Ooh, mm-hmm. what's going on? So you don't, mm-hmm. I didn't feel any man's pain or just more, you get very scared, right? And then immediately mm-hmm. you go to the doctor and obviously found out that my platelets were low as well. Um, but nobody knew for sure because I was recovering extremely fast. So mm-hmm. it was just like, okay, losing some blood, bam, the next day I'm perfectly fine, like nothing happened. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. And then the next year I got pregnant again. Again, just kind of not really thinking, not really mm-hmm. overthinking it. Well, you know, things happen. Yeah. And, um, and without any fears of any tragedies because my mind was just not wired that way. It was just, mm-hmm. you know, everything was just normal and happy and yeah. we're gonna do it. Uh, but I lost this baby again. Wow. And I lost him at five months. And so mm-hmm. that was really harsh, though, because we had just uh, came back from Hawaii and I am back. We went to sleep and I started having this terrible back pain and I thought it was because of the travel you know and just can't settle yeah. in bed but no yeah I started bleeding heavily bleeding um where it was in the middle of the night we had to call Cassandra my best friend from LA and she had to wake her son up and come to our house and stay with our daughter who was sleeping because the ambulance um mm-hmm. took me actually mm-hmm. um so by the time I got to the hospital and it took the boy out I had lost half of my blood so it was really really bad so it was wow. just like, our whole apartment was filled with blood but again um you know it was such a shocking experience I mean I was like all tan and all happy from this beautiful vacation like in Hawaii where we had the time of our lives and um I got home after a couple of days in the hospital, like I'm not knowing you know, what just happened. Obviously a shock, right, for both of us. And then we had mm-hmm. our daughter, you couldn't really tell her, she still wanted to go to the park and play. So you had to kind of move on. You couldn't just be like, yeah. oh, True. suffer. <laughs> you can suffer, okay. There's no time, yeah. We had to work, the cars were coming in, all the drivers, all the people, you know, where are my units? Where's this, where's that? We just got it. Mm-hmm. We had bought our first house in LA as well um, in 2008. So we only had mortgage, we had everything, preschool. So, um, <laughs> so I came home and two, three days, I was kind of just like, okay, okay. But it was more than okay because I was too big, right, at five months. So I was, like, touching my belly. The baby was not moving. And mm. it just, um, you know, it got to me where one day when I was just laying in bed and uh, my daughter was taking a nap. And 
the doorbell rang and um, it was the mail and hospital, Henry Mayo, they had put this package together and they had all sorts of stuff, including this little, like the baby's feet footprints. So that was, uh, that was, I think, the moment where my mind kind of just went, you know, like you kind of switch. And I said to my husband, we need to leave. Mm -hmm. I don't care where, how, when, we're just leaving. It has to be soon. So, wow. of course, I said yes. And three weeks later, we were on the road. Wow. We didn't even know where we were going. We were working remotely. We put, it was, it was brutal because I, um, we had rented the place out. Thank God we were so lucky. It was like mm -hmm. the divine energy and watching over yeah. us. We had, we sold all of our apartment, all of our furniture, including the refrigerator mm -hmm. to the lady that um, rented the place, wanting to potentially buy it. So she liked it so much, she bought almost everything in the house. Wow. Yeah. And we still have stuff up to this day in storage in LA. We have wow. books that I just couldn't get away, um, mm -hmm. give away, like Romanian books and Shakespeare and some of my theater plays and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so it was hard for me to leave because I had really wanted to go back to acting. So, mm. you know, I was, I was still... What I didn't mention was that, yeah, I was doing acting in the meantime, and I had worked with so many amazing mm -hmm. people. You know, I was um, in, in, it was humbling because everybody's an actor in LA, right? So you go, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm, I'm an actress. And they go, well, okay, so where do you part? Where, are you a bartender? Or where do you? And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> I am not. I am, I am an actress. I'm not bartending. I'm not. I, I, to survive, you know, so it took me a while. Um, and even when I got there, which I kind of skipped that part, but when I got to LA, it was the same mentality, the same fearless mentality that got me the first job in a theater play in, mm -hmm. in a pretty big festival, just by going and looking at the rehearsals every day. Mm -hmm. Even though the cast was full and they weren't even accepting, you know. So I got the part of Rosalind, um, the main part. And I was um, on the first page of LA Times within like six months of us getting wow. there. That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it's just like, yeah, mm -hmm, I want to do it. And I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and I then think, I got a I manager. Think, I think the people like you and me that just says, yes, yes. Like, I think it opens up so much opportunities faster and sooner. So much. It, it was just like when I clicked on your link, and, you know, I just listened. And I said, yes, you know, I want to do it. <laughs> but there was no like double thinking. Oh my, why am I? You know, yeah, why? because you waste so much time when you do that. So you want to, when you went there in, in North Carolina, that's when you became a, a realtor. You weren't a realtor in LA. No. God. When we came here, so I was doing jobs in LA and all that, and I had gotten in in a big theater company with mm -hmm. Pacino and Molina, and um, I was wow. with Donna Standing and worked with great actors from De Niro, George Clooney, Kate Blanchett. Um, you you can see me actually in uh, in uh, my daughter likes to watch Kumikoda, the Japanese artist. You can see me in her video clip. You can see me in Christina Aguilera's Hurt. So I had the privilege of doing that and just helping my husband and just kind of just living the life. Not really, we weren't making a lot of money. And mm -hmm. now that I think of it, I go, oh my God, we were in LA and we didn't even, we didn't even make almost a hundred grand per year. But yeah. like, you know, in LA spending, imagine. Yeah, we were like, like me. It's like, you think, you think, um, you think of that, like, even I live here now, because I used to live in LA, actually. It's so funny, because the way that you told your story, like, you, I came from the Philippines, I lived in LA, I moved to Portland, Oregon, and then my first child was also induced, and it took me 45 hours. They, they literally took him out of, like, this, a cup, like that, 
And um, I finally gave up because I wasn't going to do any drugs or anything. I finally said, okay, I want, I want, dr I want the uh, epidural. epidural. And so um, the second one, same thing. I sat on the toilet and, I know. and just blood, like I felt like actually when I woke up, I felt like I was having my period. So I went to the toilet and sat down and like blood just came out. Luckily for me, I didn't lose them. We had to rush to the hospital and he had to be C-section emergency because he was like three months premature. So he was already mature enough, about six months, to actually survive with the incubator. So You he, were just a little bit ahead of me. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. he was in the incubator for 67 days and then now he's like a healthy turning 10-year-old boy. And so... It's like yeah. the way that you told your story, I'm like, oh, I can relate to all the things that you're saying because I was, I went through that. My oldest is 13 in July. And so just a little bit ahead and um, came to America with broken English in the year 2000 and um, LA. So I think back now in LA, like I make, like I make so much money than I did in LA. I'm like, how do people in LA survive on 50 grand? <laughs> But you do. You do. Yeah. Like, you make it work. I don't know how, but you just but do. I mean, you, you know how much money we had when we went there? It's true that we lived with that Romanian family. We lived in one of their homes. So we didn't pay rent initially. But they were paying my husband $2,500. Wow. And my husband made them so much money. And then they said, okay, we'll pay you 5000 And then I was like, half of this. My husband was doing such an amazing job, so I opened all costs transport. I went to the city and I said, I didn't even know what I was signing. I signed, like, I just opened all costs transport as a husband and wife company. I click, 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 check, check, check. <laughs> and, I, and, 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 and I said, we're not working for you anymore. We're going to open our own company. Um, wow. So it was, it was, yeah, and now that I think if I would go uh, listen to my mind, I would never do it. But actually, I was talking to an intuitive healer last night, and she actually said, um, I just had consulted her regarding my daughter's allergies, and I wanted to see what she says. And she was actually mentioning about listening to your heart, mm. your heart. Because you get used to the, you know, being responsible and being a mom. Yes. Having to do stuff, but you kind of forget. Yes. Yes. The essence. So, so, so share uh, with all the journey that you've been through since we're almost um, to the end of, of our episode, what is your greatest success? And what is your greatest failure in all this journey that you've been through? The greatest success was discovering that I can spontaneously be happy whenever I want to be happy and whenever I feel like oh, being happy. I love that, yes. And appreciating every second because I've been through ups and downs and on my own with my husband. And the greatest success is our marriage because mm -hmm. I think maybe 90% of the couples fail mm -hmm. when they go through difficulties like you and me mm -hmm. with the children, mm -hmm. with with making money, with not being, and most people that don't come from a different country don't understand it's, I, what I it means it. to come. They have a different set of eyes for some reason. They don't, they, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have your own culture, you have your own food, you have your own traditions, you have your own stuff. Yeah. You just leave that organic grounding. You just mm -hmm. leave it. And oh, yeah. Thing. So, you know, it's also, you discover how intelligent you are like I've discovered the that intelligence is really being able to to speak on everyone's language yeah and so that's how you know and, and my biggest failure oh, I have to say I don't know the answer to that you know I don't know what I think I don't take anything as failures. I just take them as lessons. I really do. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if I didn't have the failures, I didn't have the lesson, I would have never been here, right? So I don't think I can say that I've had 
failures. I just had just different versions of good. What is the greatest failure that you think gave you the greatest lesson? The fact that when we came here uh, from LA, we landed in North Carolina because we just Googled best places to go to and we end up here. We said, okay, we're gonna stay here for a year because remember we had our renter in our apartment so we couldn't go back. Mm -hmm. So that was the plan to be gone for a year. But when we came here, um, I didn't foresee that our company was gonna go down and we didn't, we didn't understand recession as harsh as it was. So mm -hmm. we had our first house here and we had spent all of our money in renovating it. And, and we woke up one morning with $350 in our account. Mm. And I was crying in the kitchen. And my husband just came and looked at me and he said, we need to survive. We have a, we have a bottle. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. So that was the, 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 the click that made me turn from the actress to the real estate broker. I started doing um, real estate out of me, but also because when I had looked for my house here, I was doing such a great job that my agent gave me the millionaire real estate book at closing. I read it and I said, I want to do this. Wow. And so my first year, I made a hundred grand wow. without knowing anyone, wow. without 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 having anything i had i was just knocking on doors not kidding you amazing wow and so that was the biggest lesson the fear wow. of not being able to feed my child to provide wow oh my god i'm not sure if you've ever been in that situation it is but you know what it it, it pushes you into things you never thought you could do oh my god yeah. oh my god it's yes. really, again, one thing nobody understands mm -hmm. until they have to do it. It's like the guy that just ran a marathon yeah. without blood. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, you aren't the only one who got hurt with recession. You know that. And, and we were one of those people that lost a lot during recession. And um, to, you know, looking back now, I appreciate everything because when you say you have $350 in your bank account, with us, we, were, we had a series of months that we were, we, we were always in the hole and we didn't know where the money was gonna come from. And I learned how to coupon, I learned how to, like I never ever even thought of doing all that. But, yeah. but because we had two kids and it's like, we have to survive. We got to figure this out. But you figure it out one step at a time. And then eventually you figure it out and it just adds up over time. But um, so I talked to you about my realtor and I still get emotional about the 2008 recession and the crash because I feel and there's a lot of shame and guilt that comes with losing a lot, you know, especially when you have a lot of pride and you feel like yeah. you're so successful. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're like back to planet Earth. You're no longer the successful person. You have to go back to planet Earth. What were you doing? I'm sorry for interrupting. What were you doing then? We had, um, so we had a lot of rental properties that we lost and during recession. And so selling my, selling my um, real estate agent that today and, and she was like, you know, you cannot, you cannot, you can no longer have guilt and shame about those because the thing, the thing that happened to you is also happened to a lot of people. And I know that you take so harshly what happened to you, but you have to, cause it also happened to her in Florida and she moved here. And she said that I see those things as, as a degree in life, that that's a degree. And every time something happened to her and now she's like, there's a degree in life. And she said, you look at, at a college and university education, you pay a lot of money. And I have education. I have a college degree. She's, she says, you pay tuition. And then at the end of the tuition, you have a lot of student debts in America. The same way with life. You know, you, you, you have to pay for education regardless of whether through 
losing a lot in, in life or going to college. And the way that she just explained that, that just gave me peace. You know, it gave me a lot of peace. Mm -hmm. So That's amazing. So, I always remember that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm so glad that you... That to my daughter. I tell that to my kids as well. Well, actually, I will be able to share this with them. I'm I so can't wait to share this. Shared that. How many kids do you have? Two. So two. I ended up having you did, you did have two. You did have the second I did. One. I did Ooh. take another <laughs> Yeah. You tried and after tried and you got it. After the whole recession and craziness and after I started real estate, I did say, okay, I'm just going to try once again, just once more. That's awesome, and, sister. And I had my boy. That's <laughs> my awesome. My crazy okay, so to, for... to, to close this episode, what is your message to your kids? My message to the kids is that my kids is that I love them so much. Uh, yes, for <laughs> sure. You're a good Yeah, mom. and to, to, to take life by the horns and yes. never have any fears and always be positive and mm. go for the stars. Amazing. Thank you for yeah. that. You still talk Thank to your mom? You. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's coming actually... Um, in May, she's coming for three three months. My dad, I don't I don't know, maybe he'll end up coming for a month. Um, That's awesome. They have animals and stuff, and they, it's not easy to leave the house. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah. That's We're great. actually considering maybe retiring and going, moving back either to Barcelona or Lisbon or Budapest or somewhere in Romania. We're not sure. But I think overall, spiritually, we kind of, that's yeah, awesome. We still belong there. Well, so. I'll come visit you to Barcelona, Spain, because I Spain is on my bucket list. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, come to visit us here, and then we'll ah. go to visit you there. And once there you, you make go. it to this side of the country to see us, who knows? Maybe you move here. Ah. So buy some is... rental properties here. I'll ah, help you, you buy. Go. What is your message to your mom? My message to my mom is that, you know, my mom, she's the one that actually genetically gave me the positivity. That's awesome. Because she's the one that always said, you know, if you want to go for an Oscar, go for an Oscar. Mm -hmm. You have it all, girl. You have it all. Just do it. Just that. do it. Follow yeah. your dreams. So my message to her is to just stay as smiley and crazy as she is because she <laughs> beat me every day when i'm down and oftentimes right for tired and down she just calls and she goes hola how are you <laughs> hi mom what's up what's up with the face uh you can't leave it you know because you go wait it's like a wake-up call like, why, wow. am I upset? Or why am i tired or why am i you know and here's this 60 year old woman and she's like shaking her boobs when she goes to a party and she's ah. like all crazy and I'm like man you know That's you forget great. to leave when you're trapped into that so true mm -hmm. cool so there you go before i ask my last question where can my listeners find you i know where to find you but they don't so tell us where to find you social media where do you hang out around often and all that good stuff i'm everywhere <laughs> i'm everywhere sister i'm on youtube i'm on facebook i'm on instagram i don't use instagram that much but cool i'm getting there i don't really use it but you want an in facebook you want an in realty for i guess probably nobody would want to contact me for real estate that has been never know you would never know but Joanna in Realty um, slash the Prosperous Agency. Um, just, I'm, I'm, you know, if anyone wants to come to the Raleigh area, I'm here welcoming them with soup, with tea, with coffee, oh, with homemade great. Romanian food, that's anything they want. I'm here, yes. We're, our house is open to anyone. But on social media, Google my name. I'm there. I'm omnipresent. <laughs> spell, spell your name so they know how to Google it. So it's Y O A N A, mm -hmm. and the last name is N I N, Joanna Nin. Awesome. All right. In within one minute, um, last last question. 
when you heard the word mother hustler, it's a, it's a play of two words put together, right? What came yeah. into your mind and what's Yuana's uh, description or, um, or describe or, or definition of mother hustler? Can I say your name? <laughs> <laughs> well, Can I say you, you are I, the mother hustler? I received that, but you are as well. Yes. You know that. <laughs> mother hustler is the unity of mm. love and strength mm. to the maximum potential. I love that. I've never heard it's, that definition it's, it's before. It's the light and the dark because dark sometimes you you associate hassling with darkness yes, with force. you know but then i associated with strength with power mm. with i love that passion with yeah so that's how i see it i see it as a unity that gives the best out of anyone that's a mom because mm. To be a mom and to choose to be a mom, not just to be a mom at chance, but to choose to be a mom mm. and to take responsibility for someone's life and to wake up and to breastfeed and to work and to not sleep and to feed them and to care for them and to think about their future and to not and sleep when they're sick. To lose them and to lose them twice and to try, try again just to be so a mom again. So hard. Thank you for that. Thank so you. Hard. I appreciate yeah. you a lot. You're doing a wonderful job and I commend you for your strength and your love. And I love how you defined it. It's strength and love put together. It's a unity. Thank you. I'm yeah. never going to forget that. Thank mm -hmm. you, Juana. I Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to seeing you here and um, ramen at eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Come on ramen. over. <laughs> I'm coming. You know, you don't know me. I'll find out where you live. <laughs> I'll call your real estate agent. I'll be like, hello? Where is she at? <laughs> she doesn't awesome. live there anymore. She promised me some ramen way back. <laughs> cool. So, Thank yeah, you, I'll, I'll, I'll send you. So are you going to post this um, or are you going to send it to me or post it?